education. This whole thing of parenting. And, and parenting seeing parents seeing the significant roles and responsibilities they play in the academic outcome of their kids. It's not a game anymore. You know, I mean I look at the dash game globally a lot, you know, I look at the data, I look at the research and other countries want it. They're hungry. And those parents are helping those kids get on course to academic success, which is affecting their nations economically and which is hurting ours in many cases. But I'm, I'm very much aware of the fact when I do these programs that in the room you have a lot of people that work hard, put a lot of hours in it. How many, how many that would be you? You put a lot of hours in, you put a lot of time into helping your kids. Nobody handled them. <laughs> You're all 95 folks. Okay, good. <laughs>
So that's why I had you start off by saying you are extremely important. Somebody just walked in. Give me one of those you really important, baby. Come on, somebody just walked in. You look at them. Somebody. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, uh, they just walked in. They didn't get one. You know, you gotta make sure they have the speed. You know. Now, now look at somebody next to you and say, uh, "Not as important as me, but as important." Go ahead, say, "Not as important as me." So, so when I think about this, I said, man, what do we have to do? Because I interact with lots of parents. You know, I ran a program by the name of Hype. I'm going to tell you a little bit about that, more so tomorrow. And, you know, I just, big thing with me was, I'm going to work with all these young people. I've got to get their mothers and fathers on board. So for me, it wasn't just about trying to engage the youth. I had to engage the parents. So I would go to their homes. I would even sometimes show up on their jobs just to chat with them and say, you know what? We are in pursuit of trying to help your son, your daughter achieve academic outcomes. I need you on board. You see? I need you on board. I can work hard. I can provide programs. I can work with them, but they can go home to you, and if you're not on the same page, how are we going to help them? So, you know, we had these packs with the parents, and, you know, parent uh, uh, agreements, and we went through the hype program, and we had great success, but I told parents, if your part in this is a non-negotiable. You don't, you don't even have to know it all right now. Just hang around us. You'll get it. But you gotta be on board, especially for the future of your year. Nowadays, when it comes to raising this generation of young people, we need to slow down, breeze, and change the way we're interacting with these kids. I'm from the city of Syracuse, New York, and my heart is grieving for my hometown right now because there's so much crime in that city that they declared it like a, you know, an emergency, state of emergency up in that city. And I said, what happened from the time that I graduated from high school to where we are today? There wasn't a lot of, you know, we had a lot of divorces back then, too, a lot of single-parent households. But why were we, you know, so focused in on respecting the neighbors and respecting the community? And now we have a generation. And this is not just this area. This is all over the country, my friends. This is in rural areas. This isn't suburban areas. It's not even a race issue. It's not black. It's in general. We have these things going on. I think as a nation, it's time for us to change. And in many cases, even revert back to some of those core standards and values that we had. To establish something in our hearts of our young people. Amen. Amen. I'm getting a lot of amens today. Y'all feel like I'm generous. It makes me feel at home. Great. <laughs> well, you know, I love the youth pastors, so that there's something to be said about that. Also, yeah, no, yes. But if you look at uh, today's time period, um, mm -hmm. we, when I say we, not us individually, right. we don't respect each other. Come on. That's and good stuff. So because yeah. we yep. don't respect each other, yep. and they see that, so there's no need for the example. You get a wristband. Let me give her a wristband. <laughs> Well, not only that, you get a book too. I'll give you uh, a good example. You get, yeah, you got, seriously, because that's good what she's saying right there. Thank you. Uh, the example, I don't just give everybody free books okay, so much. <laughs> <laughs> the example was real easy. The other day I was listening to CNN. Right. I don't know how many of you are seeing CNN fans. I am. Um, but I am. they were talking about how President Obama was disrespected in his first um, mm -hmm. State of the Union address. Right. And so students. They see that kind of stuff, and they really feel like that that's, that that's the norm. Need it to act. I've been, you know, something you mentioned. I'm already give you another book. I, I've, I've been talking about. I said, you see how they bash and vilify each other in these political campaigns. Uh huh. You know, talk about pull out each other's mess, just ugly. Instead of just dealing with the issues at hand. But just as many kids are watching that as adults. Let's give her a hand clap. I like that. Thanks for having me. I was the only one that thought that. It's amazing. Yes. I think it has a lot to do with when I was coming along, probably yourself. Yeah. There were so many other great programs available for our young people. Yeah. So it made them, it got them involved, made right. them feel like they were part of something, gave mm -hmm. them something yeah. positive to do mm -hmm. in your summer, during your right. summer. The summer's key. Yeah, the right. summer's key. The man powers, the, the programs right. that went on in the, in the park recreation. Yeah. 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 All that's gone now. It's gone. So these kids are really raising themselves, they're taking care of themselves, and mm -hmm. it's all being done by the wrong influences. Terrible influences. Yeah. Terrible influences. So they're relying yes. on the game. Go ahead. Yes. And this is interactive. So I love this. Thank you. I'm sorry. <coughs> I'll come back to this. Of course, it's personal opinion. But I have a 14 year old son, and our biggest battle right now is the kind of music he wants to listen mm. to because of the kids that he was hanging out with. The association. From, from North Virginia. Yep. And you know, it was going to be Easter Short. Mm -hmm. Life, great, awesome. Right. But we just can't get him to give up that music. And right. that music has a horrible hold Impact. on our kids today. It's Whether terrible. you agree with me or not. I agree with you. You got my vote. You got my vote. And the, the mm -hmm. lack of respect and, you know, talking trashy words and talking, mm -hmm. killing everybody. And it's just. It's insane. 
It's, it's insane. That's why parents, our children's minds, it's almost like we got to look at our children's minds. Is a, that's an era we need to protect. Mm -hmm. You know, we can't just allow anything to go in there. And, and sometimes, sometimes parents will think that, well, they're at an age where they can make their own choice. Let me tell you something. Yeah, they're going to make a choice that is going to impact you and your entire household. You know, no, we have to be, I'm telling you, I mean, some people say I'm, I'm over the top as a father. I said, but you know what? My boy don't wear his pants down the here. <laughs> you know what I mean? My daughter, she wears respectable clothes as a young lady getting older. The reason why is because in my home we have standards. And I'm not going in the bar. I said, because that's how my mama was. <laughs> she didn't lower the bar. Bar, that's why I'm standing in front of you today. She did not lower the bar. And I said, where do we get this thing in this generation now we feel like we got to lower the bar just to accept it? Timidity, yes, yes. Yeah, get that best friend stuff. My mother was not my best friend; she was my mother, <laughs> and I knew that firsthand. Yes. But you know, there's, there's, and I, and I point the, the finger at a blame at the parent as well. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. I don't know when this happened. I came, and I'm older than you, I'm sure, mm -hmm. but I came. Yeah, I'm 21. <laughs> 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 But I worked in an elementary school um, for a while when I was taking a break raising my children. Mm -hmm. And what what I saw, yeah. these parents, you weren't, you know, you don't talk to my child that way. Yeah. There was no way, absolutely no way mm -hmm. to uh, mm -hmm. discipline these children mm -hmm. because the parents were up in your face. Mm -hmm. I felt mm -hmm. sorry for these teachers. Yep. There's absolutely no way. Yep. Okay. And I had, uh, we worked with some dual enrollment um, coordinators. They went to a couple of the a uh, high school talking about dual enrollment, mm -hmm. and they were telling me the parents dressed like that. The parents mm -hmm. were more disrespectful. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I thought, when did this happen? Oh, yeah.